Welcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Taylor. <laughs> yeah, I'm Catalina. Uh, and nice to meet you. Um, okay, I just want to start by saying that I really would like to have Debbie as a teacher, like go back in time and have her because she's very purposeful and very kind. <laughs> um, yeah, she was just really cool. I just think that she, the way that she models thinking isn't just something that looks nice like to us, like, okay, wow, that's a really great thing for teachers to do, but like it's being implemented into the students. Mm -hmm. Like there was this one point when the students were, or one of the girls was like, um, yeah, like I'm just inferring that this, and I was like, yeah, I remember are that they, part. Are they she first graders? Was, are they that? I don't, I was trying to figure out that, that out too. I think they might be in second. That was my guess. Yeah. I don't think they're in third. It's either first or second. So they're really young. Whatever they are, they're elementary kids using words yeah. that like Inferring. we college students probably don't even use all <laughs> right. the time. So right. I was just like so impressed and like just, wow. Yeah, because the yeah. kid, she was like, based on this reading, I inferred this. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which shows like why it's so important for us to like use the language. You know, like how Dr. Okay, Martin yeah. talks about that. But like you can tell that she really does that because it's natural for them. It's not a thing like... They're trying, you know what I mean? Like they really learned it, and I think that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's maybe our tendency to dumb me down all the terms. Like, okay, yeah. it means to like, just like, what do you think of this? No, like, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. Might as well, if that's what you mean to say, why not just say it? Like, mm -hmm. we can expect kids to be smart enough to understand that and, right. and label their thinking, and then yeah. that helps them. I mean, it's not about the test, but it helps them with that kind of stuff because it shows like they really do know what they're talking about. So I feel like it just equips them. To show them, you know, like, let's label your thinking, let's label what you're doing, because that's mm -hmm. actually something really powerful that you're doing. You yeah. Know? That's good. Yeah. I feel like she really values what they think. Like, that's mm -hmm. a thought I had, too, as, mm -hmm. like, she's... They asked her that at the end, too, and, like, she was like, I really do. <laughs> yeah, like, it's evident, like, it's very yeah. genuine. Mm -hmm. Just, like, the time, whether it's, like, the little conferences she'll have with mm -hmm. the students, she's really, like, wants to know, and, oh, I don't know, if I were a student, I would just feel like, just... Like, it's so good about myself that, wow, like, my thought processes are actually important. And, right. Like, it's worth listening to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was cool, like, um, when she began, because, like, she read through the book twice. So, like, something, I don't know why that stuck out to me. Just, like, not just, like, reading through it once mm -hmm. and just being like, hey, okay, let's do this, all these workshops. Yeah. But it's, like, she really took the time, because, like, the first time they read it, she jotted down, like, questions they had, came back the next day, wrote their questions out for them to see, and then read through the book again. And, like, like as she read through it again, was like, oh, what do you see here? And, like, modeled what she was thinking. Yeah. I think that is important, because I think if we do too much, like, ask questions, try to find them the first time you read it, mm -hmm. again, it takes the pleasure out that we learn you really need to have, you know, the first time we read just for, like, I mean, meaning, but just in purpose, but just yeah. let's read it. Let's enjoy this book first. Awesome. And then she gives them another day so they don't have to worry about it. You know, they can just read it and get what they get from it, find new questions, whatever. And then the next day, go through and analyze, did our questions get answered? Mm -hmm. What do we think about this? And then that will be a good setup to now go into the workshops because now their brain is at that analytical thing, that metacognitive thing, you know, where the first day they could just enjoy. So I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. Plus, she said it was a little bit of a harder text. So I think yeah. it's important. Yeah. Especially with that. Wow. And it's fine too because that totally flies in the face of worksheets. <laughs> yeah. Where like you just, there is no joy in reading because you're just looking for this one yeah. answer to this one question that like just frustrates you. Yeah. And so yeah, it's completely opposite. So I like yeah. how you worded that. Like, honestly, like, I find myself doing that even now in college because mm -hmm. like, okay, I know, I remember we were just talking about how you're taking child family or whatever next semester and we're in that class together now. And I like, I like for the, yeah, for the online like quizzes and tests, it's like, I don't even read the text because I don't want to. Because it's like so tedious, like <laughs> oh, trying gosh. to find, like find what they want you to find. Not, like, like, for me, it's like a setup because it's four chapters that you have to read. Obviously, we're college students, but like when she like lectures, it's great discussion, but none of that's on the test. So it's like you have yeah. to go through and like it's this automatic it's just like online a, thing. When I think of when she always says like, oh, hey, you need to take a quiz or a test. It's like this automatic voice in my head goes, ugh, like yeah, that. Definitely. And like I don't really feel like that for other classes. It's like, oh, cool, it's a test. Like whatever. Every yeah. class has tests. Yeah. But it's just like. Because this one, it, first of all, it's not personal. Like I think her class is great. But on this part, let's just talk about it. It's not personal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Again, that relationship aspect. Kind of like when Dr. Martin was saying like. We can't be a robot because we'll be easily replaced. That's what it well, is. Yeah. Like, the computer <laughs> makes the test. Mm -hmm. So I always feel like, well, there's no way that I can know the computer. You know what I mean? But with my other classes, it's easier for me to do well because yeah. I get to know my teacher, what they're looking for, mm -hmm. what the information is. But, like, with just, like, 
I don't even know how many pages we have to read in like so many right. weeks. I don't know the computer. I have no relationship. So like these questions, I'm just searching my butt off through exactly. all the Exactly, and then it makes it not fun. So like it's not scale it down to an elementary level, it's the same thing. And like, you feel like your grades don't reflect what you really know. You know, like because right, in class exactly. you're all in. So then when you take exactly. the test, you're like, oh, this. But that, I feel like that's a good example of like, to show us what kind of teachers we need to be. Because that's what I was saying the other day. It doesn't matter if it's secondary or elementary. We still learn the same way. We still yeah. need someone to really be in our face to show, like, I care about you. Mm-hmm. I value your thinking. I really want to get in there. I feel like if we even model these elementary, like, strategies in a higher level, obviously, like, at their pace and at their level, yeah. but if we did the heart of it, I feel like we would have much better results especially for kids who never got that in elementary. Like, I feel like that's where it's even more important because I know she's talking about poverty the other day, but if you think about it, we have a back backup. You know, if school's not doing what it's supposed to do, we kind of had good parents or like, you know, they that's would send true. us to someone to help. But like, if they don't have that, school is like the bottom line. Mm-hmm. So it's like even more important for us to fill that gap of like, okay, this is important that I make sure that you love reading and that you get it and that you own this because you're not going home to someone who's reinforcing it. Yeah. So I just think yeah. that helps us. Because that's what, because I went, went to this conference in Oklahoma City on Friday. I kind of talked to Asher about it a little bit. Like, yeah, um, and it was awesome. It was about, like, poverty, kids mm-hmm. and poverty. And they okay. had us go through this simulation where we were, so, like, your group was a family, and each of you had an assigned role, a different name. You had your own social security number, like, all this information. They gave you things about your family. And so, like, it was an hour, and each – and the hour was divided into four weeks, which are 15 minutes. So they would, like – after every 15 minutes, they'd, like, blow the whistle. Like, that would be the end of the week. And you would kind of meet with your family and, like, discuss, like, okay, for next week, we need to do this. Mm-hmm. And so, like, each week you had stuff that you had to do. You had bills that you had to pay. And they, like, started you out with, like, stuff. So, like, starting out, we had no cash – we had, like, a refrigerator. It was, like, oh, worth $100. And they, there was, like, different things around that you could go to. Like, there was a pawn shop. And then there's, like, the bank. There's, like, the school, the um, the wor- where you go to work. And, like, so it was just crazy. You literally had to live like this and go. And it was just crazy. It was, like, so eye-opening to see. And so, like, one thing that I was going to say is, um, so I was a 9-year-old girl. And so every day um, my – and I was raised by my grandparents with my other brother. And so they would have to make sure we went to school. And, like, at school, it was, like, insane because it was, like, the, like I know everybody's kind of acting out their part. It was a game, but, like, you were supposed to take it seriously. Like, it's yeah. not a game. Mm-hmm. It's, like, everybody's acting out their part. And, like, in the school, it would be, like, just, like, the teacher would just be, like, like my brother in this scenario, the, my or somebody who's in our group was a ADHD seven-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. And the teacher would just be, like, um, I don't know how to handle you. Come over here. Sit down and color. And like, like physically give them a worksheet, be like, yeah, just color. Yep. And then so like she'd be trying to teach the class. Somebody else would interrupt, and she'd just like yell at us or and they stuff. Kick them out the class. Right? Or they kick us out the class or something. And it was like I'm just sitting there, like in this scenario, being like, wow, like this is so real. Like if we're not the ones like reaching out to these kids, and then like something happened at school, and we came home and told like our grandpa about it, and he was just like, and they were so focused on like getting money and like going to. He had to go to work or, like grandpa. It was Dr. Livingston, but go, yeah. grandpa going to work early. So she, she was like so f- focused on like she's like, okay, so like next week I have to get to work. I have to get to work early so I can like get more money because we need this and this and this. And we went two weeks being hungry, by the way, <laughs> two weeks, our family, 30 minutes, but whatever. And so, um, so she was so focused. So like my, my brother came home and was like telling him about, he's like, oh yeah, these people at school said they'll sell me my ADHD medicine for like $2. They're like selling drugs. It was these oh other gosh. people who were in the roles of like drug dealers mm-hmm. at the school. And, um, and Dr. Livingston was just like, yeah, 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 whatever. And the whistle blows and like, she hightails it. And that just shows, like, it's not that, like, the parents or grandparents, whoever is raising them, like, doesn't care necessarily. It's, like, people in poverty, like, they they just, like, like school's their last focus. Yeah. True. It's, like, ship my kids off to school, pick them up, like, as long as they get kind of get rid of them every day. So it's just, like, yeah. it's just sad to, like, that kids, like, we are literally as teachers are, like, their only hope. I don't know how we got on that, but, like, well, you know, I think hope. it's important because for us as teachers, well, it gives us our hope. responsibility. <laughs> yeah, and, like, we have that. So it's, yeah. like, us having that, we have to be doing these things to empower them right. because no one else is. So it's not, like, that's why I think the biggest thing that I love that Dr. Martin says is, like, I'm not trying to set up a classroom where you're dependent on me because you're not always going to have me. Like, I tell the kids that I tutor now, 
we can't have that type of relationship because I'm not going to be out over you tutoring you, you know, for the rest mm-hmm. of my life. Mm-hmm. So it's like everything that we're doing is empower- is empowering you so that you can continue no matter what circumstances, no matter who right. you have, because that really is the gospel. It's just that we got brought up knowing that yeah. they didn't. Mm-hmm. They didn't get the people that you're saying that are yeah. around them. There's there. It's in a, it's a combination of reasons. But they're speaking death, you know, they're complaining, they're tired, they're, so that's all this kid is seeing, which the kid is brand new in life, you know what I mean? So they need someone that's showing them, you don't have to live this way, because the problem, it's it's like recycling, you yeah. know, because then those kids, they didn't have the same type of education, they didn't get the same things out of it, so they grow up, they get the same kind of jobs, they're in the same kind of position, right. and you know, so like, it's really a lot for us. It's something that should be on our minds no matter what kid it is because that's just poverty. But you can think of, like, the ELL students. You can think of even the kids that aren't in poverty, but the kids whose parents are so rich, they never spend time with them, and they're always mm-hmm. with the nanny. You know, like, it, right. it's all over. Yeah. So it's, like, no matter what classroom we go into, just knowing, okay, God has given me so much so much strength, so many tools, and, like, I need to do this with my whole heart because just valuing their thoughts. Just showing them, hey, this is what you're doing. This is what you can do. Raising the standard. It's challenging, but I think, like, it's almost like our duty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, just to be better teachers, to take our work seriously. And it, like, hurts my heart when you hear about, like, um, basically just teachers that use their, like, unions or stuff like that to just back out of doing more work. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, like, it just really hurts my heart because it's, like, we need you. These kids need you. This yeah. just isn't something to get money. You know what I mean? But, like, not everyone thinks like that. But that's just my heart on it. Yeah. It's, like, not only it's, like, you're pouring out love and, like, mm-hmm. being that person for the kids, but also, like, you're witnessing to your fellow mm-hmm. teachers who are not saved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, I thought of that during this conference, too, because it wasn't a Christian conference. Yeah. And you can, it's, like, obvious. Yeah. And so, like, we met after the simulation with just, like, other groups to just yeah. talk, like, small groups to talk about. And Lydia... Alabac was mm-hmm. um, my grandma and she was <laughs> saying something about as future teachers like something like we can bring healing she never was like oh Jesus heals or God heals but like something about mm-hmm. healing yeah. and this one lady kind of like rebuttal and you can tell like oh, she doesn't and she was just kind of like well I don't think that anybody can bring healing you know like physical healing and we were just like yep you know and so like that struck me that like these teachers around us I know I was like you just watch (laughs) you just wait a while it's like these teachers around us are like they don't get it and they don't have like the holy spirit to equip them and like to go through the tough things that like every every teacher goes through that but like we have the tool to handle it you know and so it's just sad to me so like being loving to these like I don't know it's like in my practicum because like my teacher's a christian teacher next door Annabelle is a Christian like or, or you graduate and so like the, but the other two third grade teachers are like obviously not mm-hmm. like it's and so like I think that they see kind of like what like there's a difference yeah. and I think they see that and I like that they see that because it's like it probably like makes them want to change and, like, yeah I want what she has yeah because yeah. we can't even expect them to know of course they wouldn't know because yeah. they don't have the they're doing the best with what they know exactly yeah. and so like us using what we do know mm-hmm. and what we do have not only like you said empowers our, our students but it's empowering the teachers around us because the cool thing is like when you talk about any bad thing that happens in life whether it's poverty or anything we have the answer you know and we know that we have the answer so it's like going into the classroom whether it's disabled children whether it's you know children who are in poverty children who you know like have all these behavioral or emotional issues whatever it is we have the answer for all of that Mm -hmm. so walking in there and knowing that you know what i mean so not only preparing academically but even spiritually like staying on our game because Mm -hmm. we know like this is what god's called us to like this literally is our ministry it's like getting on the pulpit you know but you just have to be a little bit more strategic and plan it out but they do too so (laughs) it's like the same thing so it's just cool to me how much impact we can make that a lot of people don't even realize as teachers and like bringing healing that that is what we're doing like we're healing minds we're healing hearts right <laughs> that's you like the point I mean? we were trying to make yeah, like, yeah, like, like oh you can't heal blah blah she's like yeah. nobody can heal blah 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 she's like no matter what you do in your classroom like nobody can ever she's like healing comes with within and all this I'm like okay yes but like healing comes from within with the help of the Holy Spirit you know <laughs> so yeah. it's like you're yeah. missing one thing there but that's the thing if you empower like, them to make those type of decisions they will and they will be healed <laughs> you know what I mean so it's like right. so many kids have this like victim mentality and it's like our job to show them again no no matter what the government's doing no matter what your parents are doing no matter what the people around you no matter what I do or the next teacher does 
you can still win in life. You can still get there. But someone has to be continuously renewing their mind, you know, because if they're not going to church, if they don't have that, we are that for them yeah. until they get there, you know. So it's like we have to like I just always think about our language and how our language should shift, even when we're labeling our thinking, but even more so how we're speaking life over them, you know. And it's something we really have to pray about so we know what are the little phrases we're going to say all day. Like, well, what do yeah. I want this to be? Because this is what they're going to leave with. If they only left with three things, what do I want it to be? Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was just thinking, I don't know where that came from. That really wasn't from the I know. Video, we, like, kind of really got <laughs> off topic. We usually get off topic, but this one's, like, major. <laughs> So, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anything else about the video, guys? But, no, like, in that vein, she really is very planned out. You know, I just liked how, um, just like you said, she wrote the questions, which we kind of talked about in class already. But yeah. um, how they just reviewed yesterday's questions. And yeah. she modeled her own questions. Yeah. And it's stuff that we kind of learned, but it's just cool seeing it in a class. Because I feel like, at least in my practicum, like, I'm seeing it. But I get this more like reality part of like the kids that aren't paying attention. And like you see a lot more of that when you're actually like in the classroom rather than okay, it's yeah. a video. True. So like it's cool to see how she runs and controls her classroom and the relationship that she has mm -hmm. because it totally changes the tone. Mm -hmm. And I wish like all of our teachers were continually reminded that they can do that, mm -hmm. that they have power in that room through Christ, you know, so they can set the tone, you know, because sometimes it's easy when you get in the system probably just to forget and my class doesn't have to be like this just because these kids are a little more talkative or a little more rowdy or whatever yeah they will still get it if they love this you know so it's like somehow I need to figure out are they getting it are they loving it do they get the meaning do they get the purpose you know what I mean like yeah. that's what drives them but I think that she does that so well like you said having her as a teacher you would feel like can't wait till she comes to me to see my work and like oh, you yeah. want to do work you know what I mean so I just think that's important yeah for us to be like that. I think it's just interesting how she's always taking notes. Mm -hmm. Always, like, in, like, beforehand, mm -hmm. when they read the book the first time, yeah. during her, like, when she goes around and, like, in th when they're in small groups. Mm -hmm. Like, they did the little activity where they wrote questions out on the huge paper. And yeah. then, like, afterwards, when they come collectively, collectively as a group, she takes notes mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Like, about the questions that they have. So it's, like, she's always and growing. I feel like it's thinking. important. Yeah, I feel like we need to. So you don't forget mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean and like so you're intentional about what you do yeah. like yeah. or even just like Dr. Martin says even just recording classes like if you feel like you don't even have as much time to jot everything down always recording because then you can go back and see like oh I didn't see that kid over there that really wasn't paying attention let me yeah make it my focus kid that's what I always day. see yeah <laughs> when I am like looking at my yeah this time I tried to have a focus kid and like I specifically asked him if he wanted to come up and write and he said no I was like, okay, um, what about? <laughs> He's yeah. like, no. And I was like, oh. yeah. And I, like, I emphasized before the lesson. I was like, oh, I was like, you know, what? you know, I was like, boys and girls, you know, what? sometimes we make mistakes, mm -hmm. and like, none of us, you know, um, have ever not made a mistake, kind of thing. Yeah. And I was like, that's why we have this correction tape. Yeah. And I was like describing what it is. Yeah. And I was like, if you make a mistake, like, you can just put this over it, and you can write right over it. So don't worry about if I call on you to come up about making a mistake yeah and so like that's what I was like do you want to come up <laughs> like yeah. after a while like it was yeah. kind of in the middle I was like do you want to come up he's like no uh, <laughs> like, but if you make a mistake you can come up <laughs> I mean you can still come up but yeah he still didn't want to so he's probably practicing it, handling probably. that rejection <laughs> <laughs> no I had like a similar at my practicum one of the guys they were just being jerks they just yelled out like oh, we should have a rule, like, never listen to Dari, one of the other kids. So then that kid was like, well, you spelled your, your word wrong. And so then I try to, like, so I'm like, do you want to fix it for him? And he's like, no. And then I was like, like, I just had to let that one go. Like, all right. But, you know, it worked out itself. So it wasn't even time to go on the net. So I just, like, let some, someone else was like, I'll do it. So I'm like, great. Yeah, but when he said that, I was like, Dang, come on. But it's again, it's like not even our culture. You know what I mean? Like it's not our classroom that we're in all the time. Like yeah, shaping that's how they makes treat it each other. Hard. It is, you know. So you're kind of like, like like during practicum when they ask time, we'll when talk they about ask this. me questions, <laughs> they're like, "Can I do this?" And I'm like, uh, "Go ask me slower speed." Like I have no idea. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Or one so, kid in the middle was like, "Can I go to the bathroom?" So at first I'm, I'm like, just like, "I don't really know." I, like I just came out of me like, "Sure." And then everyone was laughing because they, I was so nonchalant about like, sure, okay. So then it like, it kind of distracted them. So I was like, do they not? Are they not? I don't know. The bathroom yeah, during this know. or like what? But it's Maybe you need to ask you. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, like one day, it was one of my first days. I didn't know that it was a rule. They're not allowed to sharpen their pencils after morning announcement. So mm -hmm. they can before. And so like it was after and one's like, can I sharpen my pencil? I was like, yeah, sure. And it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so loud. And they're like, <laughs> they're like oh. wow, <laughs> anyway, so you learn those little rules. But yeah, it's easier when you have your own classroom. So, you know, yeah. your own rules. <laughs> yeah. And going but, back to like how Debbie Miller said she values her thinking. I wrote down how she said she's truly curious. And I thought that was mm -hmm. perfect. Like she really is. I really do want to know what they're thinking. I really do want to know if they get this book. And I think that is the important part that we never rush through being a teacher, rush through our mm -hmm. lessons. Like, oh, what do I need to do today? Let me give them busy work. Like that should never yeah. be. Like, us. Oh, we you have to finish I mean? this like, interactive writing. Yeah, she said she goes home and she's thinking about it. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like so that's dedicated. how we should be. Like that it's natural where it's like, oh, I really do want to know what my kids are thinking. Like I want I know. to know how they got this. I know. Always after practicum, I tell everybody about my day. Yeah. And like, can I imagine, like, can you imagine when I have my own classroom my own and like class. I see them every day I'll probably like so I'm probably my husband my future husband one day is going to be like shut up stop talking about your classroom right. I'm like we're your pretty kids. much going to have to have real aligned destinies because that's probably all I know all me too like, every time I get on that rant I'm like okay I'm sorry like guess what, what I little like so just like, guess what little Jimmy did today <laughs> yeah but okay. I think that I think that's it I think that was our longest Sorry, it video was, ever. It was a lot, but. <laughs> <laughs> <Survival>. uh, <laughs> <laughs>